Hey there, Sando Peace. How's it going? Henry here. Today we're going to go over venous insufficiency. Uh, we're going to go over the protocol and a case. The case is by Richard Garay. You may know him from the Vascular Technology page on Instagram. A big thank you to him. So here we have a case as to evaluate for the presence of venous reflux. Now, venous insufficiency and venous reflux is caused when there's damage to the valves inside the veins. Now, these valves may be damaged from prior DVTs or deep vein thrombosis, or it can be a hereditary condition. Normal valves open and close. When the blood's going towards the heart, the valve opens. When gravity causes the venous blood flow to go in reverse, the blood is captured by the cusps of the valves, and those valves then close. In a case of damaged valves, the blood will go to and fro and will pool. This pooling will increase the venous blood pressure, causing venous hypertension. This venous hypertension then leads to dilatation, ultimately resulting in varicose veins. The purpose of the venous duplex is to determine whether there is reflux in the deep and superficial venous system, including the perforators. So to begin, you want to perform a venous duplex exam, just like if you were looking for DVT. But in this case, you're looking for DVT and reflux. Place the patient in a reverse Trendelenburg position. If it is necessary to change position to sitting or standing, notate that on your images. To begin, check for DVT with guided compression and augmentation of the common femoral, femoral, and popliteal veins. While examining the femoral vessels, you can check for reflux. For the deep veins, a reflux lasting longer than one second or greater than one second is a positive finding. Once it's clear there's no DVT, you can go on to the saphenofemoral junction located in the groin. Take grayscale and colored Doppler images, measure the diameter, then perform spectral tracings with Valsalva maneuver. If there are incompetent valves, the Valsalva maneuver will cause reflux of flow. A reflux greater than 0.5 seconds will be a positive finding. In substitution for Valsalva, you can also use a distal augmentation to elicit the reflux. Once you've completed the saphenofemoral junction, then you can go on to scan the great saphenous vein. Ask if there's a history of uh, great saphenous vein harvesting for prior uh, coronary artery bypass grafts. Scan the great saphenous vein for competence throughout the thigh with proximal compression. Again, reflux time greater than 0.5 seconds is a positive finding. Identify and locate if the patient has any accessory great saphenous veins. Check for competence, measure the diameter, and assess for reflux. Next, go on to the small saphenous vein. Take grayscale and color Doppler images. Compression. Check for reflux. Reflux lasting longer than 0.5 seconds is a positive finding. While scanning the small saphenous vein, check for a Giacomini vein, which is a cranial extension of the small saphenous vein that communicates with the great saphenous vein via the posterior thigh circumflex vein. Next, go on to the posterior calf and scan any obvious varicose veins or perforators. Measure the diameter. Take grayscale and color Doppler images and spectral Doppler to assess for venous insufficiency. While you're scanning, always be sure to observe the patient's soft tissues to look for edema, which is usually a cobblestone appearance with fluid in between the fat. Also look for any perforator veins that may be dilated and assess for reflux. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this one useful. Uh, again, a big thank you to Richard Garay from Vascular Technology. Go ahead and give his Instagram a visit and give him a like. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and all that good stuff. All right, all right bye.